Good morning, everybody. It's Positive Tuesday today, July 25th, 2023. For Barron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald, I'm Ben Dryden, and you're watching Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy, presented by Professional Exteriors and Interiors. With 20 years of experience, this locally owned and operated business provides quality work both on the inside and on the outside of your home or business. Like Fitzy and I, they believe that it's the little things that make a big difference. So give them a call today. The number's right there on the screen, 715-520-2271. Fitzy, welcome back. Yeah, it's a long... I feel like it's been a while. It has. <laughs> and everything goes uh, south as soon as you're not on a show. Like, my lawnmower broke. Uh, oh, I should ask you, you have one of those, you know, Ralph Nader lawnmowers, right? Right, it's Eagle. Yeah. Uh, electric. Well, I may actually get one of those. Because we don't have a very big yard, so offline, I should actually ask about that. Probably don't need to do a whole show about what lawnmower I should buy. <laughs> uh, yeah, but everything, everything's the worst when you're not on. Schaefer jinxed us. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we had a big hailstorm, and I had to have Brian Daniels come to my house. So, oh, did you really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Everybody in the city of Race Lake needs a new roof. There was a lot of hail. That's what happened to us about a year ago. Oh, you guys got it pretty bad, I heard. Ooh, really bad, yeah. Oh. I feel How bad for lots of people. How about the sheriff's office? Uh, Bar um, you're talking about Rice Lake, but right. the sheriff's office over in Barron, did you guys experience uh, uh, like da uh, damage to the squads? Uh, just the squads that were at the fair. Um, we have five or six squads damaged. Our command post has got a cracked, uh, broken you know, vent. And so, yeah, we've got some claims we're working on. and um, But I think everybody in the city of Rice Lake needs a new roof, you know, so... But um, we'll get into scams and a little bit and a little bit later. Um, All right, well, I'll write that down. Scams, and I forgot about fair was as well. Yeah, so it's been two weeks. We have so much to talk about. Yeah. Uh, uh, something that actually just came up yesterday. Dan Stefan was sentenced on convictions in a sex recording case. I know that's not a barren thing. Uh, right. He was an ADA in Washburn, but I just kind of want to get your thoughts on that. Then we have officer-involved critical incident. Uh, two car crash leads to arrest. Bear man sentenced on convictions of sexual assaulting two victims and convicted sex offender ordered to serve prison time. Those are like our five big press releases and articles that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, oh, it looks like Dirk also had uh, dens all over. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so we have a whole bunch of that to get to. But as always, we never want to skip just our sports questions. Uh, there's not a lot of sports going on right now. So I really had to dig deep for this one. Yep. So Lionel Messi. He's okay. some big shot soccer player. I've heard of him. But I don't watch soccer because it's, you know, stupid. So, I mean, it's great for kids, but not for an adult to watch. Uh, come on. Who, who watches that? But, you know, apparently it's a big deal uh, that uh, Messi is a big deal. So my question is, does that move the needle for Americans, you think? Having Lionel Messi, uh, you know, he's like David Beckham type where it's everybody knows him. Does that move the needle? Do, is this going to get more people to watch soccer? More adult? Is it going to get you and I to start watching soccer because he's playing. Yes, I think it does. I, really? I actually do. I, I, and I don't know that maybe not the you and I's, but it's going to our youth. I remember, <clears throat> I remember Jace having a Lionel Messi shirt on, you know, when he played soccer, <clears throat> I think soccer is very popular sport. I think <clears throat> Jeepers. Um, I think it's going to make a big difference. <clears throat> Jeep. And uh, what we do. Don't you have some Mountain Dew next to you? I'm working on it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> You're working on me. Yeah. Okay. I, see, I didn't think it would. Now, soccer is going to replace baseball in 20 years. Oh. Because no young people really pay attention to baseball. Baseball is a dying sport. Um, not like rapidly, but they're losing young kids' interest, and more young kids are playing soccer. So in 20 years, soccer is a very good chance that it's kind of kind of replace baseball as the fourth major sport in America. Maybe it won't, but I feel like it probably will. I don't know a lot of people even watch baseball anymore. But yeah, certainly younger, younger generation grew up with soccer. Like, I didn't play soccer when I was a kid. We didn't have soccer when we were a kid, but now it's everywhere. Right. It is. I mean, I coached it for years. Jason and Emma both played for years. Um, you know, and there's a lot of our youth soccer program in Rice Lake is, is going strong and they're always looking for coaches. And I think putting somebody like Messi into the loop, into the game in America is it's, it's obviously a, man, oh. how much money does he make, man? Billions of billions. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you didn't notice my uh, my pink colored professional exterior shirt today. I'm wearing that because, of course, Barbie. Uh, that movie that came out, everyone's talking about. 
which I just <laughs> oh, found out this morning. Here's a fun fact. Barbie is actually from Wisconsin. Really? Just learned that this morning. Put it in our headline links even. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 apparently, it's a fictional town called Willows, Wisconsin, like in Barbie, Barbie's Where? bio back in the 60s, from Willow, Wisconsin. And it's not an actual town, but actually, Barbie's from Wisconsin. There Are you, you going to the movie? Uh, pff, no. First of all, I don't go to movies. And they're actually saying, I saw this morning as well, that they're concerned that COVID is going to come back up again because of uh, what's Oppenheimer and Barbie. Uh, they call it Barbaheimer this weekend. Like everyone went to the movies this weekend and they're very concerned that it could start back up again. I don't know. Morning, uh, Pete. Uh, Barbie. <laughs> that was a good one, Pete. Yeah. See? Yep. We're going to remove that from broadcast. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's not fair. I don't have one of them buttons. Um, so... <laughs> The golf world, and I don't remember the guy who won the championship this weekend, whatever his name was, but people were, he got had such a big lead that people were cheering for him to lose a couple of strokes that would get closer at the end. I mean, I just think that's interesting, um, you know, that the golfers were cheering because he had such a lead that in a major championship, they didn't yeah. want somebody to win that big. I mean, thoughts? Yeah, well, uh, so David and I, who's part of our foursome, for uh, right. the golf tournament, Spooner Health next. Well, that's next Wednesday. Wednesday, I think. It is so, next Wednesday. Yeah, so he came up from uh, over from the Twin Cities last Friday night, and we went out early uh, Saturday morning at Spooner Golf just to do a round, just to kind of you know we haven't played in a year, or I haven't. And when we got finished, we came back and we were just sitting here, and golf was on round three, and we watched it for a while. Yeah, I, I, you know me, I like storylines. He already had like a six stroke lead at that point, yeah. and it, it, there wasn't anything. Rom had a great day, I guess, on Saturday, but really, there wasn't. I like storylines, it, yeah. it gave me no reason to watch it on Sunday because he had it such a cool. lead and he was doing so well, he was so consistent. So, I think it's good for him, but I think it's bad for viewers, right? Right, who's gonna? Uh, I, I thought that was interesting when Sports Center brought that up last night. I just thought, hmm, that's kind of interesting because. I did watch it on and off or turn, try, you know, try to see who was taking a lead, but there was such a big lead, you never turned it back on because I the know. guy had six, seven stroke lead every day, all, you know, the whole time. So, yeah, you know, here's a follow up to that. And we have so much to get to here, but follow up on that. I did ask David when he was here because he's a part of the golf world. I asked him, Do you think Tiger Woods is done? Finished. Like, will we ever see him win again? And he said, I don't think so. No, no, he's, it's over. You may see like a, a, a one round that he's all of a sudden playing really well. And we'll finish in the top 10, and everybody will watch it. But I, uh, he had said, I don't think we'll ever see him win anything again, much less a major. What do you think? I don't know. I mean, you, but you can have a good game in golf. I mean, we look, could, at, we might win the tournament next Wednesday. Oh. You know, we could just have a, you know, we could shoot. <laughs> Not based on how I did on Saturday. Okay, so uh, we have a whole bunch of press releases and articles to get to today since you are off last week, uh, including I do want to get your thoughts on the uh, that just happened yesterday, Dan Steffen getting sentenced. Um, but first the, while you have been gone, you have, you've had the fair and the donut dash. So, mm -hmm. you know, catch us up on that stuff. How did the donut dash yeah. go? The donut dash was the biggest one ever. 239 runners. I mean, it was just an awesome morning. Uh, we ran along the lake. We actually changed the route because of the main street construction and brought the route back along the lake. And people really liked that. Um, we had some great donuts from Marketplace Foods. Um, they donated all the donuts, even though we had all these extra runners, they donated and made more donuts for us. So shout out to them. I mean, the Law Enforcement Foundation did a great job. All that money goes to our Shop with the Cop program in December. But the biggest race ever, um, and I, I know it was extra special this year because of Hunter and Emily, but um, it does show the support for um, law enforcement as continues out there. Um, and, uh, you know, we got some, obviously all the press releases we got to talk about, um, law enforcement some days isn't fun. And, uh, um, but we felt the love, we felt the love at the fair, big, huge crowds at the fair, great fair, not real hot. Like it's going to be this week. So be very careful. This yeah. Week. Wait for Dirk's, uh, weather forecast. Usually around nine ten ish. Yeah. Uh, he'll yeah. give that as well. Uh, Renee says you should, we should put our name on ice cream, like yeah. something out outrageous i believe that, that outrageous uh, outrageous and call it benefit <laughs> yeah that's really trying outrageous. To the, trying to get the food hut at one of the fairs that have a you know the sheriff dog instead of the chicago dog or something well like that's that. not a benefit it seems to be a benefitsy dog <laughs> yeah benefitsy dog it's got well, some pink, actually uh, like a pink bun 
Actually, my wife came up with Holly came up with something last night. She said, I think you and Ben should be live at the Barron County Fair every morning to talk about everything that's going on and tell us about the fair. So next year, we're going to run the live show at the you, fair. Your idea has always cost me money and a lot of work. That shouldn't cost. There's internet there. We shouldn't have to do anything. All right. We'll have to get a new well, computer. Oh, shucks. <laughs> I'll have to get a new laptop. Yeah. You can't use me uh, because you want to spend money. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to. Well, we're going to broadcast live from the Barron County Fair. That's a good morning. idea. I, I want to quickly go back to the Dome Dash. So that's, that money is the stuff that gets raised for Shop with a Cop, right? Right. Okay. So you said it was a record turnout uh, in terms of the people who went. Was it also a record amount? I'm, oh, I'm assuming oh, that yeah. goes hand in hand. Hand in hand, yeah. So we made oh. over $4,000 for the Shop with the Cop program. We spend about twelve, so we had some more money to raise for our Shop with the Cop program. But we get some grants and some nonprofits and Walmarts and Farmer Fleets chip chip into that. So that's coming up. Um, the other thing coming up this week, I mean, the fair was unbelievable. The fair was awesome. I and mean, there's a big eagle that a, a a carver made. It's a eight foot wide eagle. You can see it uh, on the Barron County Fair. Uh, I don't think we have it on our Facebook page yet, but we'll have it there shortly. Um, but the Barron County Fair site, that guy carved an eagle. I mean, really? Uh, yeah, I, w- I wish I was sneaking out on the course later. Yeah. So uh, um, it, w- that's what we need to do is sneak out on the course. But uh, so I'm going to try to golf this week just to get warmed up because I haven't golfed all year. Yeah. It's sad. It's August already. It's going to be August 1st next Tuesday. Um, so Holy cow. Uh, yeah, it is August 1st next Tuesday, one week. So um but yeah the fair was awesome the fair staff did an unbelievable job the, there was a lot of weather events or a few weather events dirk helped me out with a lot of our weather events um he was right on spot on with our weather lots of hail closed the fair early on wednesday we all saw, sought shelter in there we had an emergency operation plan everybody went and did what they were supposed to do. We had over 300 people in the hockey arena thank you to the race the hockey arena for allowing us to use that space everybody was safe Damage to lots of vehicles, lots of houses, lots of siding, lots of furniture, outside furniture, but no injuries across the county. Um, but Rice Lake got hit very, very hard. It was, it was short-lived, though, right? Yeah. Uh, was it uh, over the power? Because I know, I, I, well, Renee, I saw her on here. I remember when it went through last year here. I think it was a year ago, a little over a year. Maybe it was two. I don't know. I think it was like a year ago uh, when it went through our area that um, – I think she even lost, and my mom and dad, they lost power for like three or four days. Yeah. If I'm, well, Maybe that was a winter storm. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking of something else. Uh, regardless, was there a lot of outages for a long period of time, or was it, no, it was just the weather that came in, maybe knocked out people's power for a little bit, but other than that. I don't even know if anybody lost power. I mean, I'm sure there was a few of them, but it was just hail. I mean, this was a hail storm. It was crazy. Okay. So, Oh good! Yeah. Oh yeah. good! Yeah, that's yeah. hey, that's a win, right? That's that's something positive yeah. we can take away. Yeah, I got some damage. Hopefully, people had insurance. I know my right. brother told me a long time ago that after, like with vehicles nowadays, if you even haven't paid off, just keep full coverage. The yeah. cost of the vehicles to fix nowadays don't get liability unless it's some old piece of junk that you have no problem getting rid of. Just keep full coverage on it all the time. Yeah. That's good advice. All right, so we have. A lot to get to, five different press releases slash articles to discuss. We'll get to that uh, after 15 seconds from a word from Spooner Health. Satisfaction surveys and in conversations with patients, they appreciate the fact that staff got to know them. Staff really took their preferences into account, and they just feel grateful that they are being cared for as a person. To learn more about our services, visit SpoonerHealth.com. All right, so the first one, I know it really isn't in your area uh, but we had a story last night. The DOJ also had a story. This is actually the DOJ's headline. Former Burnett County Assistant District Attorney sentenced for three felony counts of representations depicting nudity. Uh, this was a former Polk County District Attorney, former Assistant District Attorney in Washburn and in Burnett County as well, the 88 in Burnett. Uh, so the uh, I'm assuming most people know the story, so I'm not going to go through all of this. So, but just to kind of quickly recap, this wasn't being, he wasn't being charged because he's a, 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 a prosecutor. He was charged because in Wisconsin, I'm assuming every state, uh, you can't record someone in uh, yeah. those situations without their knowledge. So that's right. what the person was being charged with. Anybody, I mean, you, you know, normal Joe Blow citizen, you record someone in those, you know, situations. Yeah, that's illegal. 
So that's what uh, that person, or that's what Dan was charged with. Uh, Judge Nordstrand offered or ordered Stefan to serve an initial period of one and a half years of confinement. I believe that'd be prison on two of the convictions, 89 days of credit, also two years extended supervision. On the third conviction, Stefan will serve four years probation after the completion of his initial sentence. And Stefan is also ordered to uh, register as a sex offender for 10 years. Do you uh like that sentence is that too low just right not enough yeah i would say it's probably <clears throat> i mean in those situations a guy like him should know better i mean everybody should know better i guess i can say that i mean no one's um where no one's perfect um but in positions like we have we have to be you know if we were held to a higher standard he should have been held to a higher standard I have no problem with that sentence. Um, I don't know the exact actual cases and how many victims there were. Uh, I hope the victims are satisfied is all I can say uh, with that sentence. And maybe they took a deal so they didn't have to testify. There's a lot of victimology and things that go into things like this, not just, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that. Well, maybe the victim doesn't have to testify. And that saved us a year. You know, maybe got it. Maybe would have got two and a half years instead of a year. I don't know that. I don't not in this case. I have no idea. Um, happy with that. I have no problem with that. He'll have to go to prison if it's a year and a half. We don't have <clears throat> anything over a year has to go to um, prison. So, yeah, have no problem with that. He knows better, you know, but hopefully he can get Yeah, I think he- you brought up something interesting. because I. So I, I don't want to talk about is that uh, how long should people go to prison for when they do this? Uh, right. That's, you know, there's laws for this stuff. Uh, is one and a half years enough? Should it be more? Sure. I don't know. But I do find it a little interesting because I think that if the, an average, let's say it was a defense attorney, Joe Blow attorney, has his own practice and does this, you know, records uh, this stuff, um, I, we typically don't see a year and a half in prison. At least right. precedent-wise in the stories that we've done, that, I'm not saying it's, it's a lot, but I feel like because he was a prosecutor, that was, that was a part of the decision making there. Because I believe one of the individuals also had a case in Burnett County that he may have been a part of, etc. So there's a lot of moving pieces, a lot of variables there. But I think someone who doesn't have a criminal uh, history and that does that, we typically don't see prison sentences ordered. And honestly, I don't know if there was a plea deal, like 98% of all cases, there's a plea deal offered either by state or defense. And the overwhelming majority of those then come to fruition it's a plea deal that's why we don't i mean you may not like that you may not like that but that's how the system works in order for the system to keep moving i don't know if there was a plea deal there if there were i would have taken it right a a plea deal that it's like okay you're gonna lose your license plea to a felony but you don't go to jail and then there's a whole bunch of you know a a, a withheld in state sentence for like three years i would think that would have been a normal outcome to something like this so i don't know if there was a plea deal maybe there wasn't and then it just went to the, you know, the jury trial and they found him guilty. I mean, it's, you would think you're going to get found guilty, right? I mean, it's the, the, what you're being charged with, I have video evidence of. It's kind of hard to <laughs> explain that one. So I feel like maybe they will. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm okay with it. But I feel like there was, because he was a prosecutor, and rightfully so, if that is the case, you should. You, you in law enforcement, you're held to a higher standard. Prosecute, you're held to a higher standard. That's how it works. You may like it, you may not, but that's how it is, man. If you don't like it, don't do the job. Don't I mean, job. I'll do a higher standard, um, you know, and that's so. Uh, Pete says, agreed. I think it should have been a bit longer because he was in a position of authority. Right. I'm saying I think he got one and a half years because of his position. I, Because I, I think if he wasn't in a position of authority, I think it would have been less than one and a half years. That's why I think I'm okay with the sentence. Right. And there could have been more to it. There could have been sure. more of, you know, misconduct. They were going to charge him with misconduct in office or whatever it was. You know, I don't know if anything, you know, I don't know if it tied to the district attorney's office. Um, so indirectly, no likes, but not directly. No one likes it when a position of, of, of power. I mean, again, we're not perfect people. No one is perfect. Nope. Um, but we are in a position where we just can't do certain things. I mean, yeah. And it's not justifying not. behaviors. Right, but I I could see how someone can get uh, a series of bad decisions that just kind of keep adding up. Right, it's let's be clear, it's not a mistake. He didn't accidentally secretly right. record stuff. That was a choice. But right. I could see how you kind of get down this the series of bad choices and decisions under this one umbrella of what this was. 
again, not justifying those behaviors, but I can, I can see that. I get it. But that's why it's so important as a prosecutor, as a sheriff, or anyone in law enforcement. We've had to do some stories on law enforcement in the past. I think like five of them now. And a couple of them were like first offense OWIs. Now, they weren't working at the time. And sure. people have asked us why, you know, you don't do OWI first offense for anybody else. It's, well, they're in law enforcement. That, that, yeah. that's, that's a different gig. I, it doesn't give me pleasure doing it. But, yeah. you know, that's why we need important. It's so important to have leadership because that sets the culture. Uh, a sheriffs, the chief deputies, chiefs of police, sergeants, uh, uh, captains, uh, jail administrators. That's why we have to have them with high integrity and ethics and moral, uh, a moral compass because that sets the tone for everybody else. And uh, yeah. it doesn't... F- the fact that this happened in Burnett County isn't super surprising is my point. <laughs> <laughs> they, they've, they've had a few uh, <clears throat> run-ins. Uh, they've had some issues with the DA's office in the past. Yeah, uh, this I think would be the third one now. So, okay, let's move on. I saw Tracy Finch yesterday. She stopped over here yesterday. What? Something really cool. Yesterday, the Chicago FOP, which is the Fraternal Order of Police, stopped in Barron County and stopped in Water- or in St. Croix County yesterday. Made us all lunch. I invited all the sheriffs and chiefs from the area. Yeah, sorry, um, I went on a rant there, Carol. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> um. Um, but uh, Tracy stopped over with her staff and had uh, they had hot dogs and hamburgers and Italian sausage and Italian beefs and cooked it for everything we went through. They drove this big trailer up and and their their lodge, their union, um, which is an, it, it was really cool. And, and Sheriff came over yesterday. We sat and visited for a while. It was awesome. So um, thanks. Thanks to her for coming uh, over. Crazy. And thanks to the Chicago PD for coming up and doing all that that they did. So it was really cool. How was that on your Facebook page anywhere? I didn't see that. <clears throat> no, we didn't even okay. didn't promote it. It was just oh. something internally. Oh, sure, sure. Yep. And somebody's talking. <laughs> Doing a live show, folks. There's some crime going on. No, no. Uh, so, the, <laughs> uh, so we also uh, we have four more to go here. This one was a press release that you sent out through the DOJ, actually. So it was their press release, but you sent it to media. And uh, our headline was officer involved critical incident under investigation in Barron suspect dead. Obviously, this is there's a lot to this, of course. What can you tell us about that for the people who didn't see this? What is this about? Well, I originally put out a press release um, because there was a critical incident in Barron County. I originally said that there's no officers were injured. There were some rumors out there as they get spreading that there we had shot somebody or that um, an officer was injured. Neither of those were true in this case, um, and the DOJ is handling it. They have to ha- release anything else, but um, we were assisting uh, the U.S. Marshals <clears throat> and as they came into Barron County with a stolen vehicle and a person they wanted <clears throat> that was wanted, and uh, he ultimately didn't stop, and then um, he crashed his car, and he was found deceased in his car. No law enforcement fired any weapon. Um, yeah, make that and, of what you uh, will, right? I mean, people yeah. can kind of infer uh, how that situation ended. But it was a very high stress, critical incident. Mm-hmm. Highway 8 was closed for six to eight hours. Um, DCI came up and investigated it. You know, that's just what we do. I mean, uh, I don't like it. I, I think it sucks, but that's, what don't you like? I, I just don't like that DCI had to come up for something like this because that was, that was an in custody or because we were chasing him, it becomes in custody. Not crazy about that. I think that's a waste of resources, but I get it. It clears us. It brings a neutral party in to say, Oh, the police did this, recovered something up. And now we, it's just a lot for DCI. DCI has to do so many of these critical incidents and there's true critical incidents. Like, like the, the Cameron and, and Shatek case and the St. Craig County case, that should be investigated by DCI. This one was pretty clear cut and we didn't fire weapons. I don't, you know, I just wish DCI didn't have to be involved. I'm glad they are because it really clears us, but you know, that's no one did anything wrong, but it's just a lot for DCI. Um, they've got so much going on. They need more help. Um, they can't keep doing all these critical incidents, and 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 it's not just us. It's and Burnett County's had several critical incidents, and yeah. and everybody's had critical incidents, and 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 Sheriff Finch has gone through a lot. She's had a, a heck of a summer, man. She's got, she's and she's you know they every time DCI clears them because they don't do anything wrong, and they 
you know, but man, it's, it's tough. And DCI has got a lot of critical incidents. I just feel bad for DCI because this one was on that edge where really, I mean, this guy fled from us. That was the only thing he, he did with us. <clears throat> and, you know, DCI had to come up and investigate it. It's just, it was just a lot. I'm glad they did. I'm glad they do it, but I just feel bad for the DCI because it, they've gone through a lot in, in Northwest Wisconsin, we only have one, you know, they're out of Eau Claire. It takes them an hour or two hours to get up here. Then they have to spend four to six hours here and they have to keep coming back. And it's just a lot for, uh, for not the, yeah. so serious critical incident. I mean, it's yeah. terrible. Someone passed away. I don't like it, <clears throat> but you know, again, don't run from the cops. Don't shoot at the cops. Don't do this things. We need to talk a little bit more about that and say, you know, cops did a good job. We have, total support in our community. I trust in our law enforcement officers. I, I know Sheriff Finch tra- trusts her people, um, but that's a lot of stress on law enforcement. It's And it sucks to go through this and wonder if the media is going to beat you up or if the citizens are going to beat you up or if the district attorney is going to say you didn't do this right. I mean, it's just, it's just a lot. And that's some of the fear in law enforcement. That's why some people have gotten out of it. Um, it it's just a lot. I mean, fully trust my guys. Everybody did exactly what they're supposed to do. You know, we, we arrest bad guys in our County. I mean, this guy obviously had a gun accessible to him. So, you know, he had, we were told he had shot at police. I don't know if that's a, we were told by law enforcement the last time he was arrested, he was, he shot at police. That's a DCI thing. I don't know. Um, so um, we go, we go home at the end of our shift. That's all I want my people to do. Now, in these situations when there was, I, if I recall, this is the one that there was non-lethal options used, if mm-hmm. I'm remembering the right one. I don't know what that means. I don't know if you can say what that means, but I mean, maybe not in this specific case, but give me an example. What What is a few examples of what a non-lethal option would be? Sure. We used a flashbang um, to, there was no movement in the car. We used a flashbang to see if there was movement, if he was just... You know, oh, I see. Laying there, being still, hoping we'd run up to the car so he could shoot at us. I, I mean, different examples like that. We use less okay. lethal options in most of our SWAT calls before we do anything lethal to make sure there's nobody just waiting for us behind the door. Um, flashbangs, rubber bullets, um, you know, uh, beanbag guns, uh, tasers, or other, those are all less lethal options. So trying to get, obviously, if a flashbang goes off, we're going to go, we're going to be startled. And that's where we would say some movement. Oh, he's still alive or he's still moving or he's this or he's behind the door or whatever it is. So those are less. Now, in these situations, well, first of all, here's a positive, because unfortunately, we've had a couple of traffic incidents that have led to deaths of our officers, three of them just recently. Correct. I'm not saying I'm glad that the, the outcome was what it was. If again, if you kind of infer how that ended. But, I mean, that's a positive. Everyone went home. Uh, all the law enforcement went home. Now, in this scenario, because a actual gun shot wasn't fired, are the people that were involved, the officers and the deputies involved, do they have to go on paid administrative leave for something when it's, well, they didn't actually fire a weapon, so are they, do they have to go some, I mean, you know, not report to work till it's cleared now? Uh, no, I didn't uh, do that to, with my deputy. I didn't. I wouldn't think you would need to, yeah. right? I mean, I think you could, and it depends on the situation. Um, in this case, I chose not to do that, and the, the deputy did everything he was supposed to do, so he shouldn't, I, I don't want to say be punished, but he shouldn't have to go through that. So, um, no, there was no okay. action taken by our deputies besides the chase, and that's what needs to be investigated per the state policy and state law. So that's what we did, and it, it all worked out. I just, uh, I appreciate DCI. They've been an They've been a blessing to Barron County for years. They help us every time we come. You know, I just it's Friday afternoon. It just wrecks their whole weekend. I mean, that's what we do in law enforcement. You know, we went, the next press release was six hours later. We yeah, that forward. leads right into the next one. It was the same day, I think. Two car, our headline was two car crash leads to arrest. Intoxicated driver resists arrest, injuring deputy in Barron County. I believe they were very light injuries, but was injured. Um, for people who didn't see that, what was that about? Well, we stopped. There was a crash on Highway 63 between uh, Turtle Lake and Cumberland. And uh, during the course of the investigation, the deputy um, thought there were some clues or some indications of alcohol by one of the drivers. He ran them through field tests. 
went to arrest them and the person resisted arrest. They actually went down to the ground in the middle of Highway 63 on a Friday, a Friday evening and fought until more officers could get there from Turtle Lake and from Cumberland to help him arrest the subject, take him into custody. Uh, both the suspect and the deputy were injured, scrapes from running on, rolling around on the blacktop. But um, yeah, that one was scary um, too, but our deputy did a great job. Um, minor injuries, didn't have, didn't wanted to come back to work and finish his shift. So he did, but wow. again, um, that's real similar to the incident that took place in St. Craig County. Only a gun was used. So OWI stops are, are creeping up at the top of my list here for, um, for changing how we do it. These are almost now becoming is. high risk situations. Like every single one of them. Yeah. It's like, you might as well just call SWAT in. Oh, I spell alcohol, I'll call SWAT. I mean, obviously that's uh, hyperbole, but they're becoming pretty high risk. Yeah. And, it- I don't know why, and I'm I'm studying oh, yeah. it. I'm looking at it. That's what you guys pay me to do. Um, I don't know how what I want to do with that yet. Or our, my team is working on that. You know, I have an administrative team that we talk about this stuff. I talk about it with our deputies. But yeah, I, something's got to give here, and um, it's not going to be law enforcement. We're going to just probably have more and more cops at these scenes um, to protect our deputies. Um, you know, alcohol is a uh, thing and and that's just two incidents in a very short period of time that were officers died or were injured and i don't like it i don't like it at all um i don't know you know i think we changed after george floyd um because people aren't arrested you know you can't arrest me because you don't have enough to arrest me yet but you know so you can't pat me down you can't search me because i have rights and i think we're gonna we got to get away from that. I don't want to infringe on anybody's rights. I'm right. not saying that. I'm saying we're going to pat you down before we, you know, field test you or, you know, so I, I think people have gotten away. It says you can't touch me until you're going to arrest me. Um, we have safety features. The law lets us do certain things. So we're going to, we're going to review that and talk about that more in the future. And, and Good. something's got there. Uh, why can't people just get along and behave them totally respectful all police? The job of Jews aren't scary, especially nowadays. God bless, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, amen, Renee. Yeah, uh, and I tell you, we made three arrests at the fair, and they were 16, 17, and 16-year-old people. Um, and the disrespect was very, very high. Not from the adults, but there's the a kids. certain age. Well, and I would say anybody, and I think it, I, I don't know. And this is just I know why. I know why kids don't respect cops because they like soccer. And if you're too busy watching <laughs> soccer, nothing good comes from that. <laughs> yeah. anyway. So but there's there's some thoughts and I have some thoughts on that. Personal thoughts, no scientific data behind it, but the little kids at the fair are love us. I mean and I think it there was just a trend there for five or six years where adults you know, we saw it. People left law enforcement. The, the, the respect for law enforcement wasn't there. Some of that was on our own doing. Some of that cops did bad. There's no question we were, but everything does bad. It was just the media sensationalized it a little bit too much. And some people lost respect. So there's a, a few years there that we've really got to concentrate and change the perception of law enforcement. I think our kids from 10 on under 10 under really respect cops. I never had so many high fives and people thank us and little kids come up and thank you. And um, that's, that's why I make our guys work the fair because that was easy. But that 11 to 17 right now, I wonder if there was, I don't know. I'd have to go back and see uh, teenagers. I tell you. Yeah. The yeah. Work. Well, some of that is, and some of it is, you know, I worked as a school cop. I didn't, didn't see that disrespect and there's some disrespect there right now. And, we got to figure that out and work on that. And our school liaison officers have, have a tough job and yeah. uh, we'll get to that. And, but this something I noticed personally, I don't have any scientific data behind it, but uh, something I'm going to keep an eye on. Let's talk about that more in the, uh, seriously, let's, yeah, let's have some more discussions about that. We have two quick questions here before we go on to our last two things. And that's from Shasta. We haven't heard about the citizen task force in a while. Is that still going on? Or ongoing. No, it's not. Um, no, we've we've discontinued that. We didn't have any more topics to talk about at this time. Those people still give sure. input to me, but we're not meeting on a regular basis until there's a topic. Now, maybe the topic we just talked about is something those citizens could help me with. Um, but I'd want to put an 11 to 16 year old. Maybe one of these people we arrested would like to come and have a conversation with me um, about 
you know, why they are like that or why they don't like cops or <clears throat> whatever it is. And some of it is just, I don't like any authority and it might not be just cops and maybe I over, I'm overthinking it. So, that could but it be, be neat yeah. So, you know, I'll even ask uh, my kids uh, this week, okay. their views, uh, cause it's everyone. Every, uh, so the youngest would be Kenneth. That's 13. So my oldest okay. daughter, she was 20 cheaper, 24, 25. Uh, I'll ask them. Mm -hmm. kind of what their views are and has that changed over the last five years uh okay. either way uh kirk anderson our very good friend kirk has a question are you doing any national night out events in Barron county which is next tuesday um next tuesday night across the country um yes we're at, we're having national night outs in cumberland at the high school cameron at mosaic telecom uh Shatek at the fire hall rice lake at moon lake park turtle lake at this uh the turtle lake park and Barron will be at Anderson Park. So we have six locations. We're, I'm working on the list right now with our deputies, spread our deputies out over across that. Uh, we allow all our deputies to work National Night Out from our jailers to our dispatchers. Um, and we're very excited about National Night Out. Um, all of our chiefs are putting these events on. We're just supplementing them to, with a squad car and come out. It's a, it's a way to meet your neighbors. It's a way to thank your cops, your firemen, your ambulance people. The helicopter is going to make a couple stops at a, def at a couple locations. Our canines will be there. Race Lakes canine will be there. Uh, Turtle Lakes canine. And and it's just a really fun night. Free food. Everything's free. Um, they, they start about five and end between seven and eight um, at those different locations. So we hope to see everybody out at National Night Out across the country. So Washburn and Burnett and uh, Tracy was telling me yesterday she's got a great cops and bobber event on yes. August 8th and then national night out. And so that's the kind of stuff that takes a lot of work behind the scenes by these chiefs and these police officers in our sheriff's department. They take a lot of work. So we hope everybody comes out and just has a lot of fun. Um, that's what we want. We want to throw Frisbees and throw footballs and have a lot of fun. And that's what we plan on doing next Tuesday night. Um, so everybody's got plans. Lunch will be served at all locations or supper, I should say. So have fun. Well, and looks we'll like we already got our wrap up. So we were already a little ahead. So yeah. that's what, you know, is coming up here uh, real quick. Cause I still want to get these last two things. Uh, Heather, a suggestion offer right along for teenagers. Um, is that still something you guys can do? I thought there was some liability issues or concerns yeah. or questions uh, there. There is. And, and there, we just get so many people that we have some people that want to be in law enforcement that we try to give right alongs to. Um, yeah. What, one-on-one -on -one conversations i would love to have that um i would love to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with anybody that would let me have one with their kid or need one with their kid or and I, we can do it here or there I'll, I'll i'll spend all the time doing that we all need to do that more um with our own kids we all need to be involved in their lives as much as we can and when it gets hard um so i get it but yeah the all right let's get these uh, yeah, the uh, last two things real quick. So this was, uh, these are stories, actually these are insider stories that we had on our website last week. Barron man sentenced on convictions of sexually assaulting two teams. Jacob Nording, I think he's around 20 years old, could be 21 now, of Barron was sentenced regarding multiple sexual assault charges, including sexual assault of a child and sexual assault of an intoxicated victim. At a recent hearing, uh, the Honorable James Babbler ordered a six, ye six years of confinement in state prison for his two convictions, followed by six years of extended supervision. Do you like that? Was that imposed and stayed? Or no, he got six mm, years. Yeah, I think he got six years. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah otherwise, a, I would have put that in. I don't remember, right? honestly, because it was last week. Yeah. I, no, I, I don't remember. I don't know much about that case. I know it's our case, but I don't know much about it. Um, okay. it's, a, it's a great sentence. I mean, that you just can't take advantage of people and people that take advantage of intoxicated people or, you know, people that uh, their mental capacity, that's a big no, no. And I'm hammered, throw the book at them. I'm fine with that one. And the next yeah. one is next ours one, too. Yeah. You actually, I think you had the original press release about this one. If I recall, maybe it was a yeah. uh, convicted uh, or headline was convicted, a convicted sex offender ordered to serve prison time for possession of child pornography. Dwayne Weisner, 58 of Cameron was sentenced uh, it was previously convicted in Barron County for possessing child pornography, and he had served prison uh, for that, uh, a prison sentence for that conviction. But now, you know, it, he's out and happened kind of again. And uh, Judge Bittney ordered a 20-year sentence for Weisner, 10 years of initial confinement, and 10 years extended supervision. Also, will have to register as a sex offender for life. 
I kind of like seeing that. That one was a. Uh, everybody gets a. You know, you get a chance. <laughs> we. <but after> that, <laughs> I don't want to say you get a chance. I mean, you I shouldn't. But yeah. I know you shouldn't, but I, I know. It's not like everybody gets a free one. Uh, right. They all should be. But yeah, I like that. Second time, okay, that's it, buddy. Right. We're, we're, no, we're, I think our, I think our court system has has heard from the people. I I I think you you kind of noticed it. I mean, and you don't follow it very closely, but you follow it close enough that than probably the average person. Uh, I'm very been very impressed with our our legal system, our courts. Our cash yeah. bails have gone up. Uh, you know, our DA has got it going on. DA Wright's got it going on. I'm very impressed. The law enforcement in Barron County is is dotting their eyes and crossing their T's. I mean, I think we got it going on, um, and I think that's gonna that's gonna make a difference. A short, we're gonna see more of this. And I think in the long run, that's gonna help us stop some crime, some crime prevention. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with all of these things we talked about on the press releases. And as far as that cash bond stuff, I think we had discussed that in the past, but remember there was that law that got passed, right? Mm-hmm. Right. What, April. We're already starting to see some of that stuff, the, re- the results of that, higher cash bonds and taking a lot more things into consideration. So yeah, I think over a few years, we're really going to start seeing right. what most of us would probably have liked to have seen already. Right, exactly. And what we've been asking for, uh, regular citizens, not just law enforcement, not just you and I, regular citizens that we talk to on a daily basis, and I know we're probably in that group that supports cops, obviously. I don't hang out. None of my friends, you know, hate cops. So, I mean, I'm in that group, but, you know, there's a lot of people. I talk to a ton of people at the fair, and everybody's very happy with how, what we're doing, how we're doing. I mean, sure, there's here, there's speeders here, there's something here, there's there, but... Um, for the most part, everybody's very happy, and I just can't thank the people enough for the support they give us. All right, so while we wait for Dirk's forecast, okay, uh, I was going to say what's coming up this week, but we already talked about yeah uh, the yeah. thing, but that's National next week. So what do you have coming up this week? Um, this week, I don't – you know, I'm going to try to take a day off, but it's going to be really hot. Yeah, like one yeah. of those press releases you sent, it was after that weekend – so you weren't uh, on the show last Tuesday because Mike was on because you had something come up. Oh, yeah, it was great. I got a message from someone. You know, the only reason that Sheriff Fitzgerald isn't coming on is because he doesn't want to talk about the officer involved and the <laughs> shooting and all this. I'm like, okay, no, that happened after. we. I, I, I even announced it before. I was with Schaefer, and you called on Friday. No, that's not really how it works. Plus, this is not like a press conference. I mean, it's a privilege to have you on every week. <laughs> but if you got like, real work to do, you know, go do that. And you had like interviews or something going on. Yeah, we so were interviewing for the uh, new highway commissioner, and I think that's a big role. The sheriff's department <laughs> yeah. plays a big role in the, with yeah. the highway commissioner. That's kind of a big and deal, I, right? Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. So, and this is yeah. Right. You sent out what I was going with that was you sent out a press release on one of these two things at like uh, I don't know one two three in the morning because yeah. I got up that must have been Saturday morning. You know, normal time, 4.35. And the reason I didn't post it right away is because you didn't have a booking photo. So, yeah. no kidding, for like three hours, I just went to your jail roster, and I was just spamming because I saw the person's name, but there wasn't a photo. So I just, like, every 10 minutes, refresh, refresh, refresh. I'm like, I'm not posting it until I see a booking photo to go along with it. But, yeah, that was, you know, Saturday morning at 2 in the morning. You're sending out a press release. So, yeah, take a day off. Yeah, I'm go golfing. Go to the driving room. How about take a couple hours? Go to the driving room. You got to help us out. It's gonna uh, be so hot. I don't want to get hot. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> speaking of uh, Derek, hot. the forecast: hot and humid this week. Ninety ninety five. Oh, sh- cooling into the eighties by the weekend. Nice. Uh, some storms possible. Yep. So keep an eye on the weather. Oh yeah. Some could be strong. Uh, heat index middle ninety yeah. up for third. <laughs> it's gonna be toasty this week. Yeah, Thursday is gonna be warm. Check on your neighbors. Take it easy. Your dogs, everything. Yeah. And honestly, yeah. like us, we don't have central air. But this is one of those times that even if it's, you know, we like to open the windows at night, have fans, cool it down. And by midday, maybe you have to turn on some air conditioning units. This is one of those that you just, even if it's not super hot yet, just turn it on. It, it, yeah. It's going to be easier on your air conditioning unit. Just turn it on now and just expect to have it on. It sounds like, according to her, probably till at least through Thursday. So don't take Man. your dog to Walmart. I mean, I know your dog gets to go for a car, and you're just going to run in and get milk. Don't take your dog with you. A lot of people call it in. That takes a lot of uh, Oh, I thought you meant dog into Walmart. I'm like, I don't think no, you could. No, in the car and leave it in the car while you run into Walmart. People call that in. I, I race like, Poor Rice Lake PD. They got to go on all these dog calls. And 
sometimes your car's running and I get it, but some people don't re recognize that. We have to go on these calls. Um, don't take your dog on Wednesday and Thursday. It's really warm. Just leave your dog at home. I know they love going for a ride in the car with you, but leave them home so that the cops don't have to chase all these dogs and car calls, please. There. Yeah, That's I didn't think about that. Too. Yeah, uh, well, I'm thinking, like, don't take your dog just from, you know, you probably shouldn't, but it's also, yeah, yeah, and don't leave your kids. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, I, that's why I don't take my kids anywhere. Sorry. <laughs> we just don't go anywhere. We just don't, don't, go anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Right. Anything else that you wanted to say or touch on before we uh, uh, No, just about? everybody planned for National and Adult next week, and uh, I guess the Polk County Fair is this weekend, so everybody go to that. It sounds like it'll be pretty cool. Don't go on Thursday. It's going to be hot, but – um, yeah, just thanks for all the support. Thanks for everybody coming out to the Barron County Fair. It was just a, a great five days. Yeah, and I want to give a quick shout out also to Kirk Anderson, who, again, who's uh, our friend. Uh, he's actually been on the show before, and he does a show on the third Thursday every month. And last, so that was last Thursday, he had uh, Neil Klein on from Family Friendly Workplaces. I think if I'm saying that right, uh, that was a great show. Uh, he he does such a good job. Kirk does in like just getting to know. Anyway. Thank you, Kirk, for always doing that on Dryden Wire. Uh, if you missed it, you know, just go to our YouTube channel. It's on How there. The shape was terrible. Oh, it was the worst. <laughs> My goodness. But Spooner Health rocks, right? But Spooner, yeah, Spooner Health. We like Spooner Health. Uh, but, you know, Schaefer, not so much. Oh, good Lord. I'll get my our patient satisfaction surveys and in conversations with patients, they appreciate the fact that staff got to know them. Staff really took their preferences into account, and they just feel grateful that they are being cared for as a person. To learn more about our services, visit SpoonerHealth.com. Whoopsie, wrong button. There we go. Say boom. I'm charging them extra for that one. For Barron <laughs> County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald, I'm Ben Dryden, and you've been watching Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy, presented by professional exteriors and interiors with 20 years of experience this locally owned and operated business provides quality work both on the inside and on the outside of your home like fitz and i they believe it's little things that make a big difference fitz you mentioned in the beginning of the show that brian was down there at his house or in his area uh working on stuff so yeah if you're in our area and you're having some roofing siding decks garage all the stuff the hailstorm give brian a call today 715-520-2271 Fitz and I will be back next week for our, I believe, our 149th episode. And that will be the day before we go to our Spooner Health golf outing. So try to get in the golf range, will you? Don't, we can't be embarrassing like we are every single year. We have a lot of fun, though. But, <laughs> All right. So until then, uh, thank you for watching, as always, and have a blessed day.